Hi again. So I got quite a few comments that seemed to indicate this was an important topic. So I thought I'd do another quick follow up to the last video I just did on my process for using DXFs out of sketches in Fusion to work on front panel design. So this is the other half of it, which I didn't show, which is just the nuts and bolts of bringing it into Inkscape and then actually doing stuff. So I'll start by importing the DXF again. And that's going to be rear panel label was the one I just created. I'm doing this one for the rear panel. Again, from Fusion, it's the scaling is whatever the units are that the design is in. So this is one to one and it's going to be in millimeters. So I'll leave that on manual scale millimeters. Then yes, I want it to be editable because I want to be able to snap and align to the objects like the holes and things in the actual panel sketch that's been imported. I'll set it to 600 DPI again, because that's good for printing on laser or inkjet printers for printing a, a panel overlay. Click OK. So there it is. While that's selected, I'm just going to kind of move it here and then now, normally, I would actually go resize page to selection, uh, but since I probably will print this out on an actual regular inkjet printer, I'm going to go to document properties and instead this time make it US letter uh, landscape. There we are. So that way I can just sort of put it on the middle of the page and give myself some room to crop with a guillotine. In Australia, we'd say guillotine, we've pronounced the L's, which is actually incorrect. While that's also selected, I'm going to ungroup. So now you can see all those individual holes and cutouts dashed as paths. So that means they will be available for us to snap items to. Um, but we have to be careful how we do that because we don't want to delete or move them accidentally. So. Now that we've done that, um, let's go to layers. I'm going to create a new layer for text. So I'll just call it text. And then I can go about placing text objects like so. So I could say this is going to be, let's see, I want bold and italic. And it's going to be 14 points. And it's going to say V of T because this is an oscilloscope output. I'm going to have one down here, I of T. Up here is going to be just bold and slightly larger. Let's make it 18 point. That's um, it's going to be 120 V AC. Um, over here is going to have a plus and here is going to have a minus. And here is going to have a chassis. Here's going to be amp in. Speaker through. And um, so, you know, once you've got all that sort of thing done and you're happy with that, we can switch to hit escape, switch to selection mode. Um, and what I want to do is select that text and then select that cutout and we open up the align and distribute or shift control A and this panel I have it this is really important so that you don't move the hole instead of the actual text um, we want it relative to last selected and always select the text first then select the object you're going to align it with and in this case I'm going to align by center horizontal and I'm going to do the same with this one right so that makes it perfectly aligned these are my BNC outputs for hooking up an oscilloscope to the dummy load to uh, measure voltage and current and then these two I'm going to align them um, I'm going to justify them to the left edges so that moves the V out to align it with the I of T. These as well need to move higher. Let me zoom in. There we are. 
So let me move that up. Let's align those by horizontal and then the plus. Okay, so select the plus, then the banana jack hole. Again, align by the second object, the centers. I'll do the same with the minus. Um, now let's go over here to chassis. I'm just dragging the view with this, the middle mouse button, by the way. Anyway, that's the idea. So you can put all the text and other objects you want. You could draw boxes, circles. You can use the other drawing tools to do lines and things. And just to show you what this might look like, let me reopen the one I did earlier. And here I have rear panel overlay SVG. Of course, you can put logos and other things in there as well. So this is, this is the one that I'm actually going to use for the prototype. And you can see I've drawn a ground symbol there and given some indication to the user that when you use the jack input for the guitar amp for the load input, the banana jacks are disconnected. Um, then from there, all I have to do is print it on some nice photo paper on the inkjet, let it dry for a minute, and it's it can get laminated or put behind a piece of Lexan or you know other acrylic style like plexiglass that I've laser cut to go over that and hold it, clamp it down with the the outside bolts. So that's how I do it.